This episode of Evolved is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped have all the tools for your manscaping needs, like the Lawn Mower 4.0 electric trimmer or the Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. Manscaped were good enough to send us their performance package 4.0. It contains the Lawn Mower 4.0, which is actually a very impressive little razor. It's really nice and stylish. It's waterproof. It has an LED light on it. It has, I think, a 90 minute run time on a full charge, ceramic replaceable blades. It comes with two little guards with two sets of adjustments. So you've got four different cup lengths between them. The little charging dock with it is USB-C as well. I was very impressed with this. You could take it in the shower and everything and not worry about it. I liked it as well. I like it's, like you said, very stylish. It works in the shower, which is super convenient when showering in a hurry. It also, I used to have one of those, one of the cheap ones you'd get at a store and it sucked. And so the second I started using this, it was like a night and day difference. So it essentially glides over my face whenever I'm shaving my face. Yeah, they also include the Weed Whacker 2.0, and that is a nice little ear and nose hair trimmer. Again, it's styled very similar to the lawnmower. It is not waterproof though, so please do not trim your nose hair in the shower. It is USB-C rechargeable as well. You can get replacement blade heads off the website. I unfortunately have reached the stage in life where I now require things like nose hair trimmer, so I, this was my first experience of a nose hair trimmer. It was a tickly new experience, but it did the job quite well. I don't need to use those just yet, but you know, I'm in my thirties. So like at some point I will. So it's there when I need it, when I will need it. And I guarantee you there will be some point in my thirties when I will need it. Yep. That day comes for us all, unfortunately. The set also includes their crop preserver below the waist deodorant and crop reviver below the waist toner. I haven't used them yet. Both smell very nice. I did the usual thing and opened both bottles and had a good sniff. I have not had occasion to use them yet, but I will be giving them a go at some point. Oh yeah. They smell fantastic. I mean, like you said, I don't, I haven't used them yet either. I've given them a good smell, but I feel like if I go on a date and I tend to go on a lot of dates, so <laughs> so I'll have to use it when, uh, when I go on my next date. We will get an updated review shortly. The set also includes a set of Manscaped boxers. I have not tried these out because I ordered them when I was a bit bigger, so they are now a size too large for me, but they are a nice high quality set of boxers. Uh, seem quite well made. Can't fault them in the slightest. I think you've actually been able to wear yours because you are the size you ordered. Yeah, I got the size I ordered. They are fantastic. They match the same style as all my other boxer briefs that I currently wear. So they just sit right in my lineup and uh, I haven't had any issues with them. Fantastic quality build. Also included with the set, you get a nice little Manscaped travel bag as well. It's a little toiletries bag. I have filled that with all of my stuff for the gym. It is now there. It travels with me regularly for that and work. It's a very nice little bag. No, it's a fantastic set. I have used it when I went to... Uh... I went to Miami so it was and it came with me it sits in my gym bag now and it's a lot more compact than my old one which was probably twice the size and I used about half the space so so if you've been thinking about upgrading your manscaping game then why not use the discount code evolve at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping and try some manscaped goodies today because your balls will thank you Spartans to Halo Book Club, part of Evolve, your home for Halo. Halo Book Club goes beyond the video games and covers Halo's extended media and lore from the novels, short stories, comic books, and more. I am your host, Aaron, and with me today, we have Lucas. Hello, hello. We are here to cover another Halo short story, one of the last. We are almost entirely up to date. There is only one after this. You know, I feel like we keep saying we're almost done, and then 343's like, here's another little short story for you. Just just one more. 
Yes, they, they have done that a little bit, but I am hoping we are about to get on top of it here until the next book comes out. This will be the first time we will be entirely up to date. It's a magical moment. Only until the next book comes out, which is August, if I remember correctly. Yes, so we have a bit of free time. Like We have a quiet summer to relax after two of these, so looking forward to it. Now, this one's slightly different because it's not actually a book for our book club. We have two short stories. I believe the like unofficial official tagline is they are called like a Halo Waypoint Chronicle. There are two of these that have been released. This one is called Vertical Umbridge. The other one is called Winter Contention. So this one was released for the 10th anniversary of Halo 4. It's just a short story on Halo Waypoint. Uh, we'll get into all the deets in a minute, but just in case you're thinking, I've never heard of Vertical Umbridge, where did this come from? That's where it came from, so it may have gone under the radar. Before we get into it, we will do the socials. If you're new to Evolved, Halo Book Club is part of Evolved. We host a variety of shows. We've got the main show podcast Evolved. We have Mission Debrief. We have Builds with Blocks, HCS Pro Talk, Halo TV Plus, which I believe recorded a fresh episode tonight. Look behind the scenes there and Halo Gear Guide and Halo Headlines. You can learn more about all of our shows by going to the website evolvedhalo.com. If you're already a fan, we would like to ask you to take a minute to rate us and leave a review on your podcast service of choice. Uh, We'd also like to take a minute to thank all of our patrons for your continued support. You guys help make everything we do possible. Yes, thank you guys. Absolutely, even though we're a little slow, you guys are still keeping us going. Uh, You guys are literally keeping the lights on and keeping the motivation running on these things. So we appreciate and love every single one of you. If you would like to become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash Halo Evolved and you can learn about all the rewards and benefits to becoming a patron, such as early access to episodes, unique swag, access to our podcast soundtrack, and our newest reward, the Patreon-exclusive podcast, I Would Have Been Your Podcast where you can hear such exciting things as spoilers, the -the behind-the-scenes recording of the advert that the regular show feed gets. That was one of the last episodes I recorded with Ian. You can go and listen to that. There are a lot of other things. It's mostly me and Ian talking about Star Trek, but if uh, you're a patron and you would like to suggest a topic, if Star Trek isn't your liking, you can go and become a patron today. Finally, we encourage all of our listeners to support us through Audible, where they can enjoy the growing collection of Halo novels all in one place, along with thousands of other novels, guided wellness programs, and more. Use the URL audibletrial.com forward slash podcast evolve to learn more and start your free trial today. We have some book info, and then we're going to dive into this. Lucas, take it away. So this book is called Vertical Umbridge, as we have said before. It is an unknown author. Like Aaron said, also, this is one of those Halo Waypoint Chronicles series that they've got going on. Uh, It was published by 343. The format's available is you can either read it on the website, and they have a YouTube audiobook available narrated by Alex Wakeford, a.k.a. Harispis. Uh, The release date is November 7th of 2022, and this is, again, for the 10th year anniversary of Halo 4. It is about a 21-minute audiobook. So the summary of the book is the story is set in early 2558 during the Requiem campaign. Concurrently with the Spartan Ops mission, everything has gone wrong. The story follows the Spartan four soldiers of Fireteam Shadow as they board the Zanar Pattern light cruiser Panum's Canticle, a series of events overheard in the Spartan Ops level, but not visualized. So this event takes place on Valentine's Day, of all days, February 14th of 2558. The location is Requiem. And we've got about six characters that are important enough in the uh, in the story. So we've got Spartan Fry, which is the fire team shadow leader. We've got Spartan Kidman, just another shadow team member. We have two recognizable Spartans, uh, Spartan Kovan, who is... Another Shadow member, she is one of the main characters in Rubicon Protocol, and if you can remember, she is the uh, sniper in in that book. So she is a fantastic sniper shot. Uh, and then lastly, we have, for Spartans of uh, Shadow, we have uh, Bonita Stone, who in also Halo Infinite, you find her dead, um, and she was killed by Jega in Rubicon Protocol. Uh, then we have Spartan Jared Miller. He is a mission handler. 
And Aaron, you brought this up earlier that it is weird that a Spartan is a mission handler. I find it very weird because the artwork for the Spartan shows a Spartan in full armor. And I'm like, why is it battle worthy? Because we had this discussion where we're like, oh, maybe he had like problem with augmentations or something else. But he appears to be a perfectly combat capable Spartan who's in the call center. You're like, wouldn't that be a Marine or like an injured Spartan or a retired Spartan if you wanted a Spartan to be the mission handler? But it's a weird one. I think the regular mission handler, maybe this is what it is. I think normally in Spartan Ops, there is a different mission handler. And then this guy is slotted in for some reason. So I think maybe like the regular mission handler is not a Spartan. But it's still weird to have a Spartan handler. Definitely. I'd say lastly, we've got the Sanghili Rin Alun. He is the leader of the Special Operations Unit, known as the Silent Blade. And he had charge of the light cruiser, Panom's Canical, that the Spartans invade in this short story. So uh, other noteworthy things are we have Abby, which is Spartan Covan's sniper rifle. And then we also have, and I'm going to find it here in a second as I read through this, we have Celine which is uh, Celine's Lance, which is a special uh, Spartan laser that Covan uses against the uh, cruiser's like energy core, core, whatever it's called. So um, and then lastly, they have uh, the team as a pelican that they call their limo, which uh, I think is really cool that they have just like a pelican on standby that they just hit a button and it like comes to them and picks them up. It's interesting to have the Halo 5 touch of like the sort of legendary weapons, like the special weapons with names, because we don't have that in Halo 4. There's no like variants of weapons or anything. So this is like a a little Halo 5 uh, massaging back into the lore. So I like that. Yeah, it's it's cool that they like inputted some of these other items in other places. What are your thoughts on the story overall, Aaron? It's a very straightforward, short little story. Like there's, it adds a tiny bit of background lore, but if you never came across this story, you have missed out on exactly nothing because you get like four bits of dialogue in the background of the Spartan Ops mission and that just about covers it. All this does is fill in a couple of little bits around it. You find out that uh, Spartan Team Shadow were on another mission at the time to destroy a site called the Covenant Summit, which seems to be like a an aircraft facility. And then they're redeployed to take out this cruiser. They like steal a Phantom and like essentially run it into the, or at least drive it into the bay. Uh, and that's how they board the cruiser because they were originally going to get in the Pelican that they called the Limo and uh take it but it was like too far away from them and they were also in like the heat of combat or like the heat of like covenant near them and they couldn't they couldn't get it they are hidden and literally about to deploy like they are minutes away from starting their own mission when they're called to do this instead and they're called to do this because in the spartan ops mission this ship is literally above the arena and they are dropping troops and reinforcements down on top of you so they have been called in to take the ship out to stop the reinforcements coming down because as uh, the Spartan of Crimson on the ground, you are getting your ass kicked down there. Or Majest... No, it's Crimson because Majestic's the team you see in the in the cutscenes the cut scenes and then Shadow is another team in the background. So like this is the whole point of this. That The screenshot that you see at the top of this story on Waypoint with the ship above the two towers that is literally if you look up in the like forerunner arena when you start that's or at the end of it like when the ship appears that's what you see that is above you there there like it's it's uh it's no fall of reach boarding the covenant ship with sam i'll say that it's also no boarding a covenant ship with uh george in reach no, it's just like, it's a very short, straight to the point. Uh, this little touch of the the Silent Blade. Yes. Is this Julem Dama's Covenant version of the Silent Shadow? I would maybe assume so. It's just like another name. The Silent Shadow are a special operations unit in their own right, so I kind of assume this is their version of it. I also noticed that Fry had plot armor when um, 
the shipmaster like beat the shit out of him and like almost killed him and then stone comes out of nowhere and saves his bacon but like he got it, it seemed like he got like punched and he got broken ribs and he didn't get slashed by the energy sword it was only until he was right about to die with the energy sword that like stone came out and helped him and i was like ooh plot armor right there yeah like it's the oh you've got broken ribs but you'll be fine you didn't get stabbed it's all good um like it's 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 very short and sweet like it does feel like it would be another spartan ops mission in its own right where you board the ship you shoot the reactor and you leave before it explodes it has that short feel to it i'm trying to think of anything it's i suppose nice to see a little bit more of stone and coven that's probably the only other like little bit cuz you you know it's it's a brief cameo i was going to say i did notice that when they they leave this cruiser they get into those drop pods those assault carapaces that the covenant have in halo 4 that like drop and like they open and like all the elites and all the the ungoy and the the kid yard jump out of and it mentions that it was uh, a surprisingly elegant landing so it's like they ain't odsts feet first into hell they get that nice smooth landing coming in we've seen these a few times now in halo because you they are what the covenant use in reach you get those landing quite a bit particularly if you play a lot of firefight you get those dropping all the time with a slap of uh, grunts or something in them coming out and deploying or whatever totally forgot that they are in reach too. and in reach they take off as well yeah yeah i for- totally forgot about that i need to go play that game again they are not your father's odst pod that's for sure they are f- much fancier but they also don't land in the f- in the middle of the firefight to come and give you any help mopping up the last of the troops. Thanks very much, Fireteam Shadow. I had to finish those guys off on my own. You actually played it? That's the real question. It's like you went back. I went and I played it. I thought, I will go and do my research here. I did turn the bandana skull on, so I was not playing very hard. Fun fact, if you play with the bandana skull and easy, you can deploy the Forerunner turret ability and just hide behind a box and let it kill everyone. That's mostly what I did. I did grab an energy sword at one point and just ran around shanking dudes that the turret couldn't get. Overall, it's just a solid little story. Like, it's not a terrible story. It's just a little filler. Definitely good for Waypoint to add to it. It is on the short side of a short story. Like, this would not be a fracture story. This is like a... It's very reminiscent of the longer lore that we get now in Halo Infinite for the events. Oh, yeah, 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 with the events, with the, the the season events. We don't have an author for it, so I assume the same person that's been doing the lore for the season events and the Fracture events and stuff was also churning this out, because this was, what, six months ago, give or take? They probably turned their hand to this as well. That's all I got. Yeah, um, like, like I said, this was going to be a short and sweet one. We are literally at the last of the... Uh, the book club esque materials. Not really a big pile else to say. If you didn't know about it, you can go and look at it. I believe there may also be Halo Waypoint said there's a PDF version available for download. Should you want to keep this forever more, you can do that too. Will that do us? I think that'll do us. I don't have anything else. We're we're almost going longer than the actual short story itself. Yes, so. the short story audio version's twenty minutes, and we are just edging that out now. So, although to be fair, we did once do like a thirty-five minute episode on the six-minute uh, short story of Fracture. So, like we we've we can sometimes stretch it when we need to, but there there ain't nothing else to say in this. Uh, I think the only other thing worth mentioning is that Fry and Kidman are currently unknown as of the events of Rubicon Protocol because Fry is on the Infinity and we don't know if he evacs or not. We never hear him mentioned again. Kovan and Stone don't mention him. I, I know they're... Kovan was looking for the rest of her team until she eventually comes across Stone, but she never comes across the other two, so we never know what happens if they made it off the Infinity or not, so... I suppose that's the only other detail about it. Uh, we don't hear about Rin ad- either after this. But like, it's assumed that he's dead because he like fled into the woods on Requiem, and as we all know, Egri- Requiem got like pushed into like a sun. They might be. They're probably dead. 
Yeah, but this is also, I believe, his first like actual appearance. So it's probably open that they could add him into future lore should they need to. It wouldn't surprise me if down the line we find him back with the Silent Blade as an enemy somewhere and we go, oh yeah, we created this character and we dropped him into this one piece of lore you might not have come across to establish that he's been around since Halo 4 and out for vengeance or whatever. Who knows? We may see him again. Maybe we will get the most overqualified mission handler as well someday. Jared Miller. Jared Miller, mission handler specialist with full Spartan 4 armor for no good reason. <laughs> it's very dangerous doing admin work. The Infinity already got attacked once, like, in Halo 4, so, like, and in Halo Infinite, so, like, I wouldn't be surprised. To be fair, he would probably be the most likely to survive in the CIC with full Spartan armor in Infinite. Oh, absolutely. Everyone else sitting there going like, why are you wearing your armor? Someday we're going to be attacked, and when it happens, I'm going to be prepared. Him standing there in the middle of Infinite going, I told you all, I told you to wear armor. This was going to happen. And then he gets splattered anyway by a, a brute. Who knows? Um, if you want to write that fan fiction, please do, and send it into the show, because we're running out of fiction, or lore, and we can do that next. Maybe we go into fan fiction after this, that's the way to go. I am not artistic. I am not artistically inclined enough to do fan fiction. Oh, we can just read the stuff that's already there. We just have to filter out all the like romantic stuff and get down to the serious lore. Fair. So, like, it'll be a three-minute episode. Pro. Oh God, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, on that depressing note, I think that will do us for this week. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode of everything we do over at the website, EvolvedHalo.com. You can also find links to our Discord, Facebook group, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and our contact information. Once again, another shout out to all of our patrons for your continued support. You guys help make everything we do possible. Head to Patreon.com forward slash Halo Evolve to learn more. And finally, if you guys want to leave us a voicemail about this lore or anything else, Halo related or not Halo related and we can cover it you can give us a call on 205 Evolve that's 205 386 5833 and with that I have been your host Aaron and until next time Evolved Evolved Evolved